Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, glad to see you all. I'm glad you're able to join us for this session, um, which is kind of a partnership between Unison and Unicon. Um, everyone here has been boots on the ground helping us with their Arizona State engagement. And our friends at Unicon have been so you know, instrumental on helping us implement the UDP through our Google Marketplace as kind of our first run. And I'm so excited to allow everyone here to get to, to know everyone in this presentation and just kind of hear what we've been working on. Um, it's a really exciting time, I think, both for Unison and Unicon. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Carrie Brown from Unicon uh, to do introductions and, and kick us off. Great, thank you, Kyle, and, and welcome everyone, as, as uh, Kyle said, to our session on notes from the field. So we really wanted to uh, take an opportunity to, to not only you know, have some of those strategic high level views of the UDP and implementation of UDP, but also get into some, some of the tactical questions of implementation and deployment, um, especially in this new context of sort of through the Google marketplace, non-consortial member implementations. Um, and we're definitely learning lots as part of that, uh, part of that initiative. Uh, I'd like to let the other members of the panel introduce themselves. I'm going to start with you, James. Great. Hello, everyone. I'm James Russell. I'm the Senior Director of Research Support and Assurance at Unison. Um, I work closely with our data services and solutions team to support both academic and institutional research that is built on the UDP and to serve institutions in their journey to, to realize learning analytics. Um, I also focus on our independent UDP offering, uh, in particular in the Google Marketplace. Um, and then I wear a security compliance hat for Unison in my assurance role. So it's great to be here. Linda, over to you. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Linda Fang. I'm a principal software architect at Unicon. I'm very excited to be here as well. Uh, my background um, uh, is I, I specialize here at Unicon on integrations and analytics projects. Um, and I came to Unicon from Instructure where I worked on the Canvas data product um, as well as SIS integrations. And I've also spent many years um, at Oracle working on the PeopleSoft student information systems product. Um, so I'm very involved in a lot of the data that flows into the UDP um, from all of the, the kind of key sources um, and have been have pretty much spent a lot of my career um, working on some of the industry standards as well within IMS um, to help support that. Great. And Diego. Yes, hello. It's always difficult to make my presentation after Linda's, but I will try to say something interesting. I'm Diego Del Blanco. I, I'm a software developer at Unicorn. Well, 23 years ago during college, I got an internship creating online courses, and I was not able to escape from that. And since then, I've been working in educational software. The last six years at Unicorn, focuses mainly in integrations, LTI, and now what with the UDP. Excellent, thank you. And uh, I'm Kerry Brown, like my colleagues, I've been doing this for a long time, been in EdTech for about 25 years. Most recently, before coming over to Unicon, I was director of higher ed development, or uh, higher ed programs, I should say, at IMS Global. And then before that, um, was colleagues with Linda at Unic at uh, Oh, I just can't get my organization straight this morning <laughs> at Oracle and before that campus uh, solutions people saw before the acquisition um, working in the higher ed development uh, applications arena. Um, let's go ahead and move forward the, the slide deck. Oh, there's our lovely faces. You've already seen this so we can keep moving forward. For those of you who aren't familiar with Unicon, just very briefly, we are a technology consulting firm. We are focused solely on the education ecosystem. Um, we've been doing this since 1993, so we've been around for a long time um, and have uh, you know, worked with a lot of different partners throughout, uh, that includes institutional as well as other vendor partners, et cetera, throughout our history. Um, we believe very strongly in the mission of education and in the ability of technology to facilitate uh, learners and learning uh, throughout the ecosystem. And because of that, we've been very excited to partner with Unison around the UDP because I think like most folks 
uh, here, we see an enormous opportunity for the, for the value proposition of the unique CFU um, and sort of what that might enable both in the short term and more strategically um, in the higher education space. Um, Linda, let's go ahead and move to the next slide. And James is gonna talk a little bit about what this partnership is all about. Super, thank you, Carrie. So this presentation is as much about um, the nuances of deploying the Unison data platform, the UDP, uh, as it is about the importance of partnerships, um, and in particular between Unicon and Unison. Um, Unison and Unicon have collaborated informally for a number of years um, through IMS and some initial engagements with institutions, uh, and in deploying Unicon's own UDP sandbox. Our relationship has been accelerated, of course, and part of this discussion through our Google Marketplace offering. Um, the extended human resources needed to implement uh, the UDP meant that we needed to find a partner with the breadth and depth of knowledge required to help us implement support uh, and support the UDP, uh, especially at scale. We share similar uh, missions and, and a similar charge uh, to support student success through deep understanding of learner and learning environment data and technologies driving the digital transformation of higher education a rich history supporting and developing data pipelines, data standards, data integrations, and learning analytics. And finally, Unicon uh, really provides a complement to Unison toward our evolution and growth. Unicon brings expertise in collaborating around these technologies and potentially fills gaps or augments Unison's ability to deliver, I think, key services and longer term support for marketplace or independent UDP clients. So as I referenced above, driving our partnership is an independent uh, uh, UDP offering, and that changes our service model. And it brings with it new challenges around resources and growth. So on the left, we see Unison's current member uh, membership model as the mainstay of our organization, serving content solutions, communities, the UDP, and data services to our 13 member institutions. At center is a simplified diagram of the UDP, which represents the transformation of contextual and behavioral data from multiple systems into one normalized data representation. Really a unified portrait of learners, learning environments, and learning processes based on the Unison Common Data Model, the UCDM. Now we can think of context data primarily coming from the SIS and the LMS, but also other learning tools providing rich dimensional contexts, rich dimensional data, demographic information on students, course content such as exams and discussions and quizzes via daily batch processing, 24 hour cycle more or less. And events also generated through the LMS and, and teaching and learning tools, um, which come into the UDP uh, as real time feeds of the behaviors of students or instructors or even systems expressed within the LMS or learning tools, such as logging into a tool, navigation through courses, kicking, uh, clicking on pages, um, submitting assignments, or grading an assignment. So our context data, uh, again, is standardized, normalized under 70 defined UCDM entities, and the events are structured under the IMS global standard. On the right is our independent, oh, keep to that slide, thank you. On the right is our independent UDP offering um, through the Google Marketplace, uh, through which institutions license and purchase the UDP based on iPads FTE for their institution. Providing increased access and exposure to the UDP made sense certainly as an alternate revenue stream and is facilitated through our ability to package and deploy the UDP uh, within an institutionally dedicated tenant. And Google's marketing efforts and incentives provided to prospective GCP customers certainly added to the marketplace's viability in our eyes. Regardless of whether the UDP is delivered as a service uh, to members or independently, UDP is built on Google Cloud technologies and infrastructure that are the foundation for services that we employ uh, to create the UDP, as well as provides native tools for data analytics, such as SQL, Data uh, Studio for visualization, AutoML for machine learning, all through data accessed uh, in Google Cloud BigQuery and Cloud SQL. 
Next slide, please. So a complex set of system and services service requirements indeed. Um, while we initially assumed that some institutions would have the technical resources to deploy and support the UDP on their own, we recognized also the degree to which we support member institutions is also likely to apply, for our uh, apply to our marketplace um, offering. That the UDP is not just an application or just a platform, but really both uh, with a complex set of mediating services that are realized in analytics and actionable insights about learners, learning behaviors, and learning environments. So sections A and B might be best uh, described as, if we build it, they will come components. That's Unison's early perspective to the huge lift that the UDP provided. And, and without a doubt, it is successful in this regard, but it wasn't enough. Uh, section C is what everyone has their sights on, and, and that section is as complex um, and as necessary as the former two, as, as A and B. Each of these groupings requires both an implementation and to a lesser or greater degree ongoing support. It's not simple and almost certainly why the UDP is unique in putting all of these pieces together um, in a coherent fr framework uh, of a platform service uh, services and support. So A involves the ongoing administration uh, of the Kubernetes, the GKE infrastructure, that is the foundation of the UDP, automating the ingest and coalescence of event and context data. B involves unique inst uh, instantiations of an institution's LMS and SIS and the potential for adding to the Unison common data model as new data sources contribute unique representations of learners and learning environments such as the potential for advising tool data to be incorporated within the UDP. Or even um, in, in subtle ways, as in interpretations into what constitutes student enrollments, uh, enrollment status rather, at various stages during the semester, or how we represent cross-listed students or courses. And C is really the bridge between the normalized data structured by the U UCDM and analytics that address institutional inquiry around student retention, curriculum, course design, interventions, or predictive modeling. Next slide. So ASU Ed Plus, a central enterprise unit for ASU that designs, delivers, and supports innovative teaching and learning mo models for student success is Unison's first independent UDP offering implementation and provided enormous insights uh, into what it takes to realize independent UDP, UDP implementations. So in ter terms of our proof of concept, ASU brought exciting new concept, uh, context and institutional research imperatives. The UDP fit nicely with an already well-advanced and developed understanding and application of analytics at EdPlus that just needed the ease and standardization and normalization of learner data that the UDP provides. EdPlus has a commitment to improving learner outcomes in parallel with ours. And with it came unique approaches to understanding student success from ASU's perspective, and who also benefited from the analytics that Unison has implemented for member institutions. And then brought creative input and solutions to Unison and contributed to the necessary feedback loop that is really key to product improvement and evolution. It also underscored the following, uh, that UDP must often be tailored to institutions. And there are challenges as well as opportunities here. Requires multifaceted multi stewardship and services, that is A, B, and C. There, there are, as I mentioned, multiple service layers to play uh, that, are, that are rather in play um, that, that need to be coordinated and that require specific levels of expertise. Resources can be challenging. Unison is a lean team with significant member responsibilities and partners here are super key to us. Um, deep GCP expertise is required. A deep understanding of the Google Cloud technologies must be in place with any implementation team. Data architecture and data management expertise needed. An understanding of the necessary thread that connects the technical pipeline with model data and data views that lead to, um, to analytical insights. And then learning analytics is really the realization of everything. And the more accessible, flexible, and visual 
these information products are, the better. The right partnerships are key uh, for all the above reasons. And then finally, Uticon is just well positioned in these regards to not only implement the UDP, but to holistically connect the dots. And I think this is the most important piece uh, when we look at the entire set from A to C, to bring skill sets from A to B to C. It is also really important to emphasize how critical it is to have an understanding of each layer here, that, um, that simply implementing the UDP without an understanding uh, or interest in learning analytics is as much of a disadvantage as developing analytics without understanding uh, the mechanics of the data pipeline. They're intimately connected. Next slide. So uh, building a partnership, what this really means in terms of sort of the rubber hitting the road, um, Unison and Unicon's relationship has both short and long-term pieces in play. At present, Unicon has provided valuable data services to ASU after the heavy lift from the Unison services team to guide ASU's SIS mapping for the UDP, Unicon contributed additional ASU-centered support in working with their SIS team toward completion of this essential phase. And continue and potentially build on Unison's investment in C, in learning analytics for, for Ed+. Long-term support for all deployment areas of the UDP, A, B, and C, would be ideal, which will take con uh, continued um, uh, collaboration with Unison on future UDP deployments for sure, allow us to deploy and deliver at a rational scale uh, that depends on both the right clients and being technically set up for success and resourced appropriately, share knowledge and experience, help build and improve the UDP. We have already benefited from Unicon's insights and ideas on various components of the UDP. Help us understand client needs and design appropriate and sustainable services and support. Assist in the deployment of the UDP for both independent clients and member institutions. This is a real opportunity for Unison, allowing us to build redundancies and knowledge and improve our product and process, and again, deliver at scale. And finally, partner in, a thought, in thought leadership around the UDP and analytics, draw on the potential wealth of experiences we will acquire around best practices, um, innovating uh, data pipelines and data lakes, standards, new integrations, and analytics. So now Linda will discuss um, UDP implementation lifestyle from, from Unicon's perspective. Thanks, James. So yeah, so as James was describing so that A, B, and C perspective, um, we wanted to put that into a frame of kind of that implementation life cycle. And I'll walk you through kind of the various stages here, um, because really it does involve different actors and different parts um, kind of uh, taking a taking a role and and playing playing a a, a helping hand. So initially, it's going to start with the Unison offering itself, which is now available to institutions via the Google Cloud Marketplace. And as James said, the UDP is deployed as a Kubernetes application in Google Cloud Platform um, in a project that's associated with your institution's billing account. Um, there's actually good documentation that walks you through everything. Um, it's in GitLab. I'm putting the link in the chat. So um, that's something that you all can use to start and understand um, what is involved there. And so as you start looking over what is provided with the UDP, uh, your learning analytics team is going to want to think about how they want to make use of the data sets that will essentially get manifested through the UDP foundational tables and views. From there, what you're going to do is provision and then actually spin up those necessary components. And then you're gonna to start to map your source systems into the UDP via the ingestion and loading schemas. And this is a key part of the process because this is where things like how your LMS and SIS data are related together is really going to be worked out. In addition, at that stage, you're going to also connect in the event stream from your LMS. So if LMSs are sending caliper data, this is where you would set up that caliper endpoint and point it to the UDP. And as data is starting to land, uh, this can be done in waves. Um, you can do your data validation um, throughout. So you're going to essentially want to 
check to make sure that data is flowing as you expect and um, appearing in places um, in, in related tables as you expect. And at this point, depending on what initial questions you're looking to answer with your analytics, you are going to want to start experimenting with visualizations using the UDP tables and views. And throughout this process, Unison is going to ma be making improvements and releasing periodic updates. So you're going to want to allocate time to perform updates to those GCP components and artifacts that are that are being released from Unison um, and make sure that that uh, that you take into account what is coming with new new features or new enhancements um, that might be coming through from the Unison uh, release. And in addition, when the services are up and running, they'll need to be monitored and maintained just to ensure that they continue to run each time. But uh, per particularly, sometimes the source systems, uh, Canvas or your SIS, there could be changes in the way that that source data is actually being e extracted or produced in, in different ways. Um, so regular data validation there is going to be important to check if making sure that the source systems um, still end up uh, landing the same way that you expect. So next, Diego is going to walk us through some examples from our experiencing in onboarding into the UDP. Thanks, Linda. As it was explained before by James, UDP has a complex set of system and service requirements. Remember the ABC infrastructure data service and learning analytics. Making all those parts work together can be challenging sometimes. We are not going to see some scenarios and examples where there was a need for some extra tasks to optimize the way UDP works and or to troubleshoot some potential issues. The first scenario is what we call the mapping misalignments. Uh, we are going to load the data from the SIS, the LMS, and other tools in UDP. And internally, UDP does a great job linking together the entities that are related. So you, you can have courses in the SIS, and you will have the same courses in the LMS. And UDP usually is able to know that they are related. And that's really the, the power of UDP. But well, UDP does a great job figuring that, but a great job doesn't mean magic. So sometimes if those relations does, don't happen, we need to be sure that we are providing the right and enough information to make those connections. We have been helping to solve these problems, providing advice about the right mapping between entities in the different systems and preparing the data ingestion files to have the right information. Let's see one example. We have an institution where sometimes you can find more than one course in the SIS, and they are sharing only one and only, only one course shell in the LMS. Let's say that the teacher is teaching, for example, in two, in two majors, the same things. The course has different codes in each major, but it's the same course and the same teacher. So the instructor say, hey, please, can I have one Canvas course for this? And, and then UDP, complains about that because he UDP is expecting a one-to-one -one relationship between the LMS and the SIS coaches. Well, we were able to find a way to modify the SIS in yes files to store this information and, and solve the problem with a workaround. But the interesting part here was not only solving the problem for this institution, is the that we provide feedback to the UDP team so they know that this scenario can happen, something that was not happening before and they can work uh, in, in, a, in a solution that will solve this problem naturally without need of workarounds. Please, next slide. Institutions using UDP at this moment are all of them using Canvas, but we want to open the use of UDP to other LMSs and SLS. At this moment, for example, we're working on a D2L integration. To do that, UDP has a uh, an LMS standard ingestion schema. We need to provide all the data in that schema of data. And we need to map the existing LMS data with that schema. We are creating an ETL process that exports the data from the LMS, stores it in an intermediate storage, launches an ETL process that converts the data to the expected UDP schema and sends the resulting CSV files to the right bucket. This process is being designed in GCP infrastructure in a way that will be not very difficult to adapt it 
to any other source of data. So in the future, we could do Moodle, Blackboard, Sakai, or any other system if an institution requires it. Next slide. Another scenario that we have been working on is the optimization of the infrastructure. By default, UDP deploys some Kubernetes resources and database resources, and all of them have a default size. For a small institution, that size maybe can be overkilling because the system is designed to, to work with a huge amount of data. And this small institution, maybe they are paying more money each month for resources that they don't need. So we are able to, to adjust this infrastructure to be smaller, but they still work as expected and save some money each month. And for, for example, for ASU, we had used the opposite problem. Some processes were using all the database resources and causing the database to crash. What did we do? Well, the database was tuned. We changed some parameters in a way that now it works successfully every night. And we were able to do it without increase the memory of the database. So at the same time, we didn't increase the bill. It, it, this expertise is some of the things that you can maybe need sometimes. And please, next, next slide. And the last, example, the, oh, sorry, the last example is related with data validation. Uh, we have original data in the LMS and original data in the SIS. And before doing some serious use of the UDP, ensure that we want to check that everything matches as expected in the UDP. For example, at ASU, someone querying the UDP say that some enrollments that were in the SIS were not in the UDP. So we started research why these enrollments were not in the UDP. Um, we compared the data, we checked the files, and we discovered that those enrollments were not for real courses. They were just a placeholder for research hours for the doctorate program. So they did not have an LMS shell or anything like that, and that was the reason that were not included in the, in the queries. We have been working too, for example, with some mysterious disappearing grades that are in, in, in the LMS but not in the, in the UDP. And well, at the end, everything has an explanation, and we are able to work a solution to make those rates to, to appear correctly. And everything usually is rated with the mapa, the data mapping. Um, these are just examples of possible tasks that are needed to use the UDP, because as we said before, the magic doesn't exist. And to work as expected, the UDP needs to be ingested with correctly made ma uh, data and queried in the right way. The UDP team and Unicorn can work together to support the institutions on all these tasks. And Linda, now is going to talk a little more about this. Yeah, I think we're going to open it up for questions and discussion and, and Carrie, uh, take it away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before we fully open it up to discussion, I wanted to take an opportunity to, now that we've sort of done an overview of, um, of what the implementations look like and some of the things to, to consider. I wanted to, to kind of walk through with panel members and, and dig down into a little bit more of some of those pieces. So I'm just gonna ask each of you some questions, hopefully it won't catch you too much off guard. Um, but uh, James, I think I'll start with you and and kind of as a fundamental question, if there's a, if there's a school that's thinking about or considering the UDP, especially in the context of an independent implementation place or otherwise. What are some of the fundamental things they should be thinking about as they consider the UDP? Well, I think, I think from a learning analytics standpoint, um, it's having an institutional vision for what a tool like the UDP can reveal and um, what answers um, are they looking for, what questions are unanswered. Um, so I think having a, a clear idea of um, a vision for learning analytics is, is absolutely imperative. And now more than ever, we're seeing in our engagements as institution, those questions are clear, um, especially in this massive shift to an online universe and the, and the, and the necessary complexities that come with an online universe and a, a, a um, separation between at certain levels between the old modes of interacting and reaching students to new online versions where tools are the mediating uh, uh, mechanism. Understanding how those tools function, how, understanding how students engage with those uh, tools are not just about um, creating predictive models about um, retention and, uh, and interventions, 
but really leading to how do we design courses better so that our courses are preemptively interventive, intervent, intervening. They are created in a way that engages students from the beginning, and it's based on the data that we're using around curriculum and course reform from UDP. So that to me is, is one of the, the, the most foundational pieces is to really have that vision of where you wanna go with analytics. Well, it's an interesting observation that you, that you made that people seem to have a, a, a good grasp of the sorts of questions that they're actually trying to answer. Because for those of us who've been looking at the learning analytics space here for a number of years, for a long time, it felt like everybody knew they needed learning analytics, but they didn't really quite know what they meant by that and didn't really quite know what questions they were trying to ask or, or what questions were most beneficial to ask. So maybe we've uh, kind of moved into a new phase here. Um, Linda and Diego, and Linda, maybe start with you. So kind of bearing in mind what, what James just said, what sort of planning, let's say, uh, you know, let's say an institution, they've got an analytics vision, they decide they're gonna be thinking about the UDP and, and thinking about a UDP deployment. What sort of planning should they do or should they have in place as they move forward with an implementation? Yeah, so I was just actually thinking as James was talking that um, one of the ways that we've seen schools be more effective is when they think about kind of that thin slice, um, trying to uh, do something that's a little more iterative. So start small, maybe even think about just validating a subset of your data. Don't worry about all your data that might be um, the source from your SIS and your LMS all matching 100% from the get-go before you can even write the first data query um, and start looking at your at your data tables. Um, it's been really useful. I've seen. I've been really happy to see how excited and you know it's all, almost like the light bulbs are going off when uh, Kyle and Sarah from the Units and Data Services team um, work with. Uh, the, the ASU team and, you know, have been doing the training sessions to help them understand here's how you, you know, here's how the units and data in the tables, you know, after some of that data comes in, you know, here's how you can actually do queries. Um, and so I think having uh, a quick, uh, small slice that gets you to from source all the way through to your first query, even if it's not on a comprehensive set of data is really useful because then you can go back and always add more data. You can always um, augment what it is that you're providing um, as inputs. Um, and then along the way, you will gain a lot more knowledge of the overall uh, Unison data model and what, what's available through it. Diego, like Linda, you you had your hands in the guts of the ASU implementation, and again, kind of going to that planning question, but maybe even at a at a at a deeper level. What are some of the things that, for example, that you've encountered in the ASU implementation that um, that either you know were planned for and and went well, or maybe things that, as we think about future implementations, we would recommend be sure that you're thinking about these pieces. Um, as you as you start forward, yeah. Every really every institution, uh, most of the institutions are very similar, but they are not exactly identical. And they everyone has their own special situations and special cases, and and most of them they are aware of that because they know that maybe I don't know they allow um, to uh, a section to be in two different courses at the same time. They know that this is not a standard, but they do it for some specific case that is uh, special. So if, if they are aware of this in the beginning and they can think and about all that and, and tell the, the team before, well, we have these special situations. Let's think about all this in advance and, and before we find it later, <laughs> that is a big problem because they doesn't match the, the schema. So trying to advance uh, to, to the final processing and thinking about these problems is, is something very interesting to do. That's great. Um, we will go ahead and open up uh, two questions. Um, feel free to um, take yourselves off mute or raise your hands. Um, also, if you're more inclined, feel free to answer or ask a question in the chat. Um, and we'll, we'll try to get to everybody. I'll give it a moment to see if anybody 
uh, raises their hands out to that list. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to I'm going to seed the conversation with a couple specific questions. Um, one is at a very practical level. Again, not knowing necessarily who we have on the call today, um, this may or may not be relevant to to folks here, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And that is, uh, James, I think probably to you. Do you have to be a users and member to license and use the UDP? No, and that's and that's one of the. Um uh advantages uh or, or it provides variety uh, we have a membership model as i mentioned and we have an independent um, udp offering through the the marketplace um and it, it's uh designed uh, for um generally r1 institutions but any institution that has a, a need for analytics um and has a, of course online uh presence for both uh and and, and ideally an sis that's integrate, integratable as well. So um, it is really open uh, to the higher ed community. Okay, great. And that is something relatively new, which is um, I think part of the part of the intention of this conversation is to is to understand that and understand what that means for the broader higher education community. This this um, conversation is part of that birthing. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, does again, just kind of looking, feel free to raise hands, um, folks, but um, you, you touched on this, but I just want to touch on it a little bit more now that we've, we've delved into some of the, um, some of the deployment scenarios. Um, for, for these independent, for example, these independent implementations, um, at the moment, is that something that they have to do a deployment through GCP, through the Google Cloud, or are there other architectures or mechanisms available? I, I think, I think um, uh, the, the potential is, is open. Um, as I mentioned, there are, there are certain um, advantages for us in our initial um, uh, offering through the Google Cloud Marketplace uh, that facilitated um, that vehicle. Um, but it, but there, are, there are other ways that we can deploy and, and we're really in this iterative uh, stage of understanding what the best way in, uh, is and how do we facilitate it in, in ways um, that um, both reflect on our product well and also meet the needs of, of institutions. And I think you know, what's, what's key here is, uh, again, based on resources and shared expertise, is a partnership in this regard um, is, is crucial to us. And um, if, we're, if we are gonna look at something that looks like scale, whatever that looks like, um, uh, it, it, we have to partner. And, and I think you know, the long-term advantages for both Unicon and Unison are, are clear. Um, we, we can share uh, ideas, um, share resources, um, and, and grow a product uh, potentially as well. So it's, it's really exciting in that, in that way. So we have some flexibility. And, yeah, and, and one uh, thing I that I, I guess uh, I'll just add in here that one thing yeah. I see is a, is a really interesting benefit is that, you know, regardless of, of kind of how, um, you know, your Unison is deployed, you know, you can still participate in this in this really rich community of, you know, people really thinking through those learning analytics, more advanced kind of research use cases. Um, so I think that's kind of a, a nice way to, you know, kind of get to the next level with um, really, really putting, uh, I guess, some of that en data engineering as a foundation that, uh, that can be attainable in different ways, and then letting people kind of freeing them to focus more on answering those real analytics questions. Yeah, and I, I think, I think one of the, the, um, you know, one of the key pieces to membership certainly is that we have a whole, we have a wing of data services that helps uh, steward institutions toward analytic success. That is one of our sort of spearheads: is that we want to take that uh, the um, in incredible resource that is the UDP and the vision for learning analytics and actionable insights and in, in, in intelligence at the institution level, and we want to bridge bridge that gap. And institutions come with varying degrees uh, of um, local expertise in not only the SIS implementations, but the actual um, execution of analytics on top of the, of the UDP. So 
Um, that is, as I said, that layer of C of, of learning analytics and realizing um, what is possible on top of you know, wonderfully normalized and harmonized data is an entirely uh, um, separate and complex endeavor in itself. Um, and so that's, that's part of my team and what Kyle and Sarah do so well. Um, and, um, and that is a decidedly a member benefit. Great. Uh, I'm going to pause for a moment because sometimes folks need a little momentum to take themselves off mute and ask a question. So uh, if anyone has any questions for the panel here about UDP in general or about this sort of deployment, things that they should be thinking about. Not seeing any hands up, so clearly you've answered all of their questions and they're all ready to move forward. Um, any last words that anyone would like to share from the panel? Um, any, any last thoughts? Well, I, I want to, to maybe repeat a little what Linda said about the community. The community is very important because one of the advantages of UDP is that uh, you mix a lot of systems and you have a, a common schema. But this common schema is not only for you to have everything in one place. It's the same schema that every other person or every other institution using UDP in the world has. So you share the same schema, the same, same tables, columns, rows, etc. So a solution that works for you can be shared with others and the same. So if, if, if a big community and a strong community is created that share solutions, you can save a lot of work. You don't need to develop by yourself all the analytics part because maybe you can take it from other places and it works perfectly in your, in your system. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And of course, it's one of the hallmarks of, of higher education um, and the higher education community, which is that collegial, um, you know, rising tide lifts all boats mentality. Uh, we're just about at the top of the hour, so if there are no additional questions, we'll go ahead and wrap. And thank you to Diego and James and Linda for all of this information. This recording, I believe, will be available uh, at some point later. So if you want to come back and revisit it, um, look for that. And of course, uh, you can always reach out to any of the panelists here, um, and we'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Uh, with that, continue to enjoy the summit. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, stop the transcript.